question that's on everyone's mind is where is Trey Young going to begin next season? The answer is simple. Two of 30 teams, either the Atlanta Hawks or the San Antonio Spurs. When they traded away DeJounte Murray, the Hawks signaled an idea of either hitting a reset button in terms of building around Trey Young or resetting the entire team. And if they're going to reset the entire team, the only place that Trey Young can be moved off to is San Antonio. Obviously, the Los Angeles Lakers or the Miami Heat or whoever else can try and pursue Trey Young. But if you're Atlanta, you're foolish to move him anywhere but San Antonio. The reason being, the Spurs control Atlanta's future. Right now, the way it's sitting, the Atlanta Hawks can't control their future because all of their first round picks from 25 to 2027 are tied to the San Antonio Spurs because they traded those three years of picks to the Spurs in exchange for DeJounte Murray a few years back. So if you've moved Trey Young anywhere else, the Atlanta Hawks will more than likely be a 20-win or less team in the entire NBA. And what's the point of being the third-worst team in the NBA if you can't get a reward for it, which would be a top five, top three, potentially number one pick in the NBA draft, not only for one year, but for the next three years. And thankfully for Atlanta, the Spurs are actually the perfect fit for Trey Young, allowing for a possible acquisition of Young to the Spurs for what Atlanta wants to actually go through and make both sides very happy. If I'm the San Antonio Spurs, I'm making the move for Trey Young. The reason why is if you keep those picks around from Atlanta, reason A, Trey Young's going to be on the team. They're going to be borderline playoff team, meaning that pick is going to not be a necessarily impactful number one overall guy. If you're the Spurs, if you sit pat, women yama has been incredible. You're going to be, again, a top 22 team in the NBA. So you're going to have about pick eight to pick 12, unless you hit lottery gold like the Hawks did this past season, which is not very likely. Meaning you're going to not perform well as Spurs, and you're going to have two picks that aren't necessarily that beneficial to you as an organization. So if I'm the San Antonio Spurs, I'm going for Trey Young, especially after Victor Wimanyama said he wants to compete ASAP. He wants to compete right now. And Trey Young is the perfect piece to put on the Spurs team. Reason A, the offense and the scoring ability he brings to the team. Every season, except for his rookie year, Trey Young has averaged 25 points per game or more. He also shot 38% from behind the arc last season on 10 attempts and had great ball movement with 11 assists per game. So by adding Trey Young to the mold, the San Antonio Spurs actually get a high-level number two scoring option on the team and also allow for their biggest weakness on offense, which was three-point shooting, to take a huge step up. Last season, the Spurs had one of the lowest three-point percentages in the entire NBA, ranking bottom three. They also attempted 37 threes per game. So by bringing Trey Young to the mold, it allows for them, yes, to keep that quantity of threes up, but make a lot more and have it be a quality three-point percentage. Secondly, he's a great passer, right? He can move the ball well. He can help orchestrate an offense, having 10 to 11 assists per game last year. And he excels at the pick and roll, which is a perfect thing for the Spurs to bring in because Victor Winyama is going to be a perfect pick and roll partner for Trey Young, making them probably one of the most lethal point guard, center, big man duos in all of NBA because of that nice dynamic they'll have with each other, whether it's Wimby setting the screen or the Spurs continue their experiment of having a guard set the screen for Winyama. Last year, they did it with Trey Jones meaning the two defenders would actually be attracted to Wimbyama. Jones would leak out and be open for an easy finish. They can do that same move with Trey Young or do the more traditional move where Wimby sets a screen, and Trey Young is either going to be able to finish easy inside or just lob it up in the middle of the air. No, Wimby is going to get that ball. So they're going to have one of the best pick-and-roll duos in the entire NBA, and their offense will take another huge step next season along for them to be a very, very competitive team. The only downside of acquiring Trey Young, if you're looking at it, is he's a defensive liability. And yeah, I he is. He's not the best defender, but who cares? The Spurs don't need him to be a good defender. He's going to be guarding the fifth player on the court at all times. You look at the way the Spurs are structured. They have a tremendous defensive unit. Women Yama is going to be deep for the next 55 years. Devin Vasile is a great wing defender, has a long reach. Stefan Castle is a phenomenal defender. He's shown that in college. He's going to do it again in the NBA. And Jeremy Shohan has really been explosive and awesome on defense. 
So you don't need Trey Young to be good on defense because he's most likely just going to be standing in the corner next to somebody who's stagnant on offense, quite frankly. So you bring in Trey Young because his offensive skill set is going to take this team to a whole other level. You don't need him to do well on defense because he's not going to be guarding Steph Curry or LeBron James or Damian Lillard any night. It doesn't matter. This defense does not matter. And then, again, if you're Atlanta, I think they're in a position where, quite frankly, if they're going to move off a of young, they, they have to do it with the Spurs. They have to get their future back. And you need to ensure that you get the 2025 pick, especially because the draft's so loaded. Cooper Flagg, Jaleel Bethea, Ace Bailey, Harper, a lot of talented guys are entering this draft class in 2025. So if you can get those picks back, control your future, and build around your share, and whoever you acquire in the next draft or two, as well as Anekwa, Kongu, Jalen Johnson, some other talented pieces, the Hawks can really build a very well-rounded team. And in my opinion, if there's a trade that goes through between the Spurs and the Hawks, the way it's structured is most likely going to be Trey Young going to Atlanta in exchange for the 2025 pick, the 2027 pick, maybe rights to the swap for the 2026 pick. I don't believe so. I think it's going to be 25, 27 one of Malachi Branham or Julian Champagny, and then Calvin Johnson to help counteract the big salary that the Spurs are taking on with Trey Young. So I think it's a smart move for the Spurs to make because Trey Young will bring a whole new element to the team and a great offensive standing to this team. And then Atlanta's going to be able to get their future back, build around some of their young guys, and hit the reset button. And also, Quinn Snyder's a great coach. He's done this multiple times. He was able to move off of one guy and build for the future just like that in a second with the Utah Jazz. If you remember correctly, looking at Quinn Snyder and the Utah Jazz, he came in and was competing with a dynamic team of Gordon Hayward, Derek Favors, right? A very good Utah team. Rudy Gobert was there as well. And then Gordon Hayward left to go to Boston. He then drafted Donovan Mitchell and developed him in a second, allowing him to not have a lot of time between the rebounding stage with Donovan Mitchell and then Rudy Gobert being the one-two on the Jazz. The same thing can happen right now. You have Trey Young, you had DeJounte Murray, you were playing all right, move off of DeJounte, you move off of Trey, you have Rochere, you bring in another guy in the next draft, and you have some of those other supporting players around you, and you'll never skip a beat. So personally, if I'm the San Antonio Spurs, if I'm the Atlanta Hawks, I'm making a trade that since Trey Young to the San Antonio Spurs, and a most likely scenario of receiving Keldon Johnson, one of Malachi Branham or Julian Champagny, 2025 Atlanta first round pick and 2027 Atlanta first round pick.